The circular economy is on the rise, at least if you look at how much is being talked and written about it. You know, you'd hardly find now a policy or a corporate social responsibility report that doesn't mention in some way or another the circular economy. But what do citizens and organizations understand by a circular economy? What debate is taking place about it? This idea that an economy can be circular within the current industrial system is very pernicious. Martin Callisto Friant investigates the history and the actual discourse around the concept of a circular economy. The majority of circular economy uh, advocates do not question the never-ending circle of consumption of goods. Yeah, in the end rely on this old notion of doing business or making business. We're focused on closing loops but nothing else has to change. We asked Martin to elaborate on his research on the site of Decoval, a sustainable planned workplace for creative and social enterprises on a former shipyard in the north of Amsterdam. For many, it's a nice meeting point, but it's also a great location to reflect on circularity. Illusions like growth. Illusions that tell us that the more money that moves in the economy and society, the better off we are. And to reflect on different examples of circularity. For instance, La Maison Autonome in the west of France is an ecological site with an emphasis on promoting ecological living and autonomy. Et donc, notre idée, c'était d'être autonome, mais euh, également euh, de pratiquer la sobriété heureuse. C'est-à-dire construire sa maison, faire pousser des légumes, s'occuper de sa santé, s'occuper de l'éducation des enfants, Etc. He's, he's living more autonomously, more freely, more in control of his own resources and his own time. Les poivrons, une petite chachouka ce soir. Donc, euh, on, on avait envie, pendant notre passage sur cette planète, profiter de toutes les occasions d'apprendre et d'acquérir des richesses, euh, non pas de copier un modèle, mais surtout euh, de vivre euh, intensément ce qu'on avait à vivre sur cette planète. Voilà. Ici, c'est un, on appelle ça un zoom. Right now, he's showing the path of what a future that is fair, that is just, that is free, that is healthy, um, could be about. From small to large, also, the European Union explicitly opts for a development towards a circular economy, just like many civil society organizations and businesses. But what does it mean for many of them? And the transformation that they talk of, and that is very often mentioned in mainstream discourse, is a transformation of industrial systems that doesn't really affect our mode of consumption or our mode of life. Federico Savini is an associate professor of the University of Amsterdam. He has a focus on urban planning and system change. My main concern with the mainstream view on circular economy is that instead of reducing consumption and waste, it does make the economy more dependent on it. If we build an economy that prospers in monetary terms out of the reuse of waste, we cannot imagine anymore the end of waste. We will need that output flow all the time in order to produce new economic activities. I think this is the main weakness of the circular economy discourse and that entails the main risk. Uh, but if you look earlier, there's really been talk about sustainable, regenerative forms of life since uh, the dawn of time. Actually, humanity itself was circular for much of its existence. Um, it only kind of stopped being circular with the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution marked a breaking point in the way in which mankind dealt with issues like labor and environment. So in the same way that industrial systems started to pollute and destroy and appropriate life, uh, both people by exploiting their labor and obviously nature by appropriating and exploiting and depleting its resources and polluting it, uh, there were voices of opposition from the very beginning. Opposition to capitalism. 
because capitalism, according to Martin, by definition exploits people and nature. Essentially, the whole economy, the whole capitalist system is based on the necessity for continuous expansion. It's actually very well said by Greta when she said that, you know, we're sick of your fairy tales of, e of eternal economic growth. There is no planet B. There is no planet blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Some established players may toy with the concept of a circular economy, but they run away from the real consequences, says Melanie Jaeger Erben of the Brandenburg University of Technology. They struggle with, uh, first of all, integrating these very, very radical thoughts into their practices, and they also uh, very much, yeah, in the end, rely on this old notion of doing business <laughs> with it. So we have the idea, but we don't. We never go uh, along the notion of doing business or making business. Maybe the, the solution is not new business models, but it's to go beyond business <laughs> and have something different, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something that is yeah. not, not what, what we call business today. We need a new way of thinking about nature, and of defining and practicing our relations with nature. And what I would find interesting in this context is to go to the direction of yeah, those post-humanist thoughts, for example, to try to see humans as a species among others and um, integrate this understanding of being related and this understanding of being part of something also into our practice. As long as we do not change our attitude and behavior, an ecological catastrophe seems imminent. Sea level rises faster than we've ever, than we always predicted. Our models are always more conservative than reality, and 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 so the very place where I sit right now, as in 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 50 to 100 years, might might be underwater. One would expect that such developments would result in calls for a radical system change. Yet, when it comes to implementing circular economy, it kind of shifts completely from the original ideas and really focuses just on the technocratic, technocentric elements of what a circular economy can be about. So it becomes something of a discourse to essentially use technology and innovation in order to maintain the system as it is. Today we meet Una Morrow. She is assistant professor in the Rural Sociology Group at Wageningen University, where she teaches in critical food studies. She says the mainstream approach to the circular economy is capital-centric. And what I mean by capital-centric in relation to circular economy is that most policy discourses and innovations are meant to make capitalism more efficient, more lean, more sustainable, and find kind of technological fixes around the surpluses and excesses and contradictions um, of capitalist development. And I, yeah, I think for me, what's yeah, missing in a lot of circular economy policies and discourses is a sort of, we're focused on closing loops, but nothing else has to change. So as long as it's a closed loop system, it's considered sustainable, but we don't ask about the social benefits, the long-term environmental benefits. And, and that requires a redistributive and a democratic transformation from, from really the bottom up. More outspoken socio-political approaches have long been out of the picture, until the last few years, says Martin. And now, finally, it's rising again. In this Amsterdam neighborhood, we find an example of the share economy. Here in the Freizeit van Moerkerke, uh, where we preserve food together with local residents, uh, so we take food waste from the nearby market, uh, we apply family recipes, ancestral knowledge, uh, that is, there's a, an abundance of ancestral knowledge in this neighborhood. Uh, we apply it to the waste and then we are left with really amazing uh, food products. This is a tomato chutney from a Bhutanese and an Indian lady in the neighborhood. So we also put their names here. 
Yeah, it is a completely a co-creative uh, project. The garden where we are now, it was also built with local residents and is maintained with local residents. We also have chickens. Uh, and each day of the week, another family, another household comes to take care of them and to take their eggs. And then we have lunch together. We, we do all kinds of things together. We celebrate each other's birthday. So-called Casco Land projects are aimed at the development of an ecological and social sustainable society, both locally and globally. So in everything we do in the Formula of Cascoland, it's really about uh, facilitating these kind of neighborhood-driven, co-creative, circular projects. Uh, and also to make ourselves redundant in the end, so that we can leave and the project evolves by itself. So it is also possible. Movements that give the circular economy an everyday, small-scale and social component creating what I call careful circularities. So using the, the, exist, the kind of technology, you could say, of community composting as a way of not just closing material loops in neighborhoods and collecting organic waste and making soil and growing plants, but also creating circuits of care and solidarity through that process. This alternative, social approach to circularity deserves to receive a different name, concludes Martin after extensive research. And so these discourses were so fundamentally different from the traditional mainstream discourse on circular economy that uh, we had to be they had to be called differently, and that's why we decided to call them circular society discourses, and the other one calling them circular economy discourses. Federico Savini agrees to a large extent. If we talk about circular economy, I think it should be a common understanding we're talking about the circular society. However, I think it's true that because the mainstream argument of circular economy is economy driven and economists driven, then it makes sense to reframe it in terms of circular society in order to counteract that discourse and put forward the social and dimension of the circular economy. The European Cresting Project analyzes the state of the art in circular economy practices. Professor Walter Vermolen supervises the research of these three PhD candidates. He sees an inconvenient truth in each of them. So the inconvenient truth uh, in this case is that circular economy is not just only about economy and recycling, which is very much promoted in the technocratic perception of circular economy, but uh, in the opposite view, the uh, opposite discourse, we see much more emphasis on the transformation of society, which also includes much more attention for uh, sharing and giving uh, people access to products without buying new stuff. Overlooking the discourse, he hopes that his research will continue to promote a more fundamental and social equal approach to circularity. We don't need to make one more boat. Uh, for a billionaire, or another highway when we could have, you know, a train. And therefore, our embrace a more socially inclusive and socially transformative agenda that includes redistribution, consumption reduction, degrowth, and other key elements uh, that enable us to really live equally, fairly, within the limits of the biosphere.